Being born after 1980 could be considered one of the most significant financial mistakes one could make. The housing market has become unaffordable, necessitating loans for college education, and job opportunities are scarce. Financial crises occur frequently, making it challenging for young individuals to get ahead financially. This predicament has led millennials to be labelled as the unluckiest generation in terms of economic growth. A recent study reveals that even the ability to afford down payments for homes is a struggle for everyone, not just millennials. The study draws attention to the fact that influential figures like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Paul Allen, Steve Ballmer, Eric Schmidt, and Vinod Kosler, all billionaires in the tech industry, share a common trait. They were all born in 1955. Journalist Malcolm Gladwell argues that this is not a mere coincidence. According to Gladwell, Bill Gates' success in founding Microsoft can be attributed to the timing of his birth. The year 1955 was optimal for becoming a tech billionaire, as it placed individuals at the right age to capitalize on the nascent personal computer revolution in 1975. In contrast, those born after 1980 faced the challenge of paying exorbitant amounts for college tuition and basic homes. Moreover, they entered the job market during turbulent times such as the dot-com bust, the global financial crisis, or the COVID-19 pandemic. These circumstances, Gladwell suggests, hindered their financial progress. His book Outliers was initially inspired by his observations of New York corporate lawyers who shared strikingly similar backgrounds and achievements. Gladwell found it intriguing that a single person seemed to dominate the field, prompting him to ask the question, why was this the case? Conventional explanations for Bill Gates' success often focus on his intelligence and ambition. However, Gladwell's analysis offers a fresh perspective, highlighting the significance of being born at the right time and capitalizing on specific opportunities. He observed that many individuals who possess high intelligence and ambition do not accumulate fortunes of $60 billion like tech billionaires. This phenomenon is not exclusive to tech billionaires. It also applies to other contexts such as online role-playing games. A common and seemingly inevitable issue with these games is that long-term players who joined when the game was initially launched have ample time to level up their characters, acquire the best gear, and amass in-game wealth. The developer relies on new players to join and contribute to their revenue, or at least, replace players who become disinterested and cancel their subscriptions. However, new players find themselves competing against experienced players with higher level characters, making it difficult for them to compete effectively. Naturally, nobody wants to spend their leisure time being consistently defeated in an outdated video game. Consequently, developers are left with two choices. Either reduce the disparity between new and old players, potentially angering their most loyal customers, or allow the level gap to persist, leading to the gradual decline of the game as player numbers dwindle. In the real world, we face similar challenges, and there are four significant reasons why young people might struggle to achieve financial prosperity. The first reason is limited job opportunities. Building wealth predominantly occurs through employment, even for those who eventually become successful business owners. Typically, individuals start their careers in professional fields where they can develop skills, establish connections, and earn sufficient income to pursue independent ventures. However, the average retirement age has been steadily increasing in America, affecting not only individuals nearing the end of their careers, but also younger generations. If people must work longer before retiring, it leaves less room for young individuals to ascend the corporate ladder. Consequently, despite millennials earning more money than previous generations did at their age, they possess less wealth overall. This is primarily due to the necessity of working in high-cost-of-living cities to access high-paying jobs, where they compete with senior professionals who are on the brink of retirement but not quite ready to leave the workforce. However, when baby boomers were in a similar stage of life as millennials are today, they were able to afford homes in these cities before they became unaffordable. At that time, baby boomers controlled 22% of the nation's wealth, compared to a mere 7% controlled by millennials. It's a classic chicken and egg scenario. Older generations need wealth to retire, while younger generations need older generations to retire in order to accumulate wealth. Unfortunately, in this situation, nobody wins, but young people are the ones who suffer the consequences. Therefore, it is crucial for young individuals to understand how money works and determine whether it's too late for them to achieve financial success. Likewise, for those born before 1980, it's important to amass how long their children might remain living at home due to financial challenges. Gladwell's theory about tech billionaires born in 1955 does have some flaws. 
There are numerous billionaires in the tech industry who were born long after the 1960s, like Mark Zuckerberg, the apparent overlord of Meta, with a net worth of $97 billion despite being born in 1984. Outliers always exist, and Zuckerberg is an exception that proves the rule. Although Gates and Zuckerberg represent the financial pinnacles of their respective generations, Gates remains wealthier than Zuckerberg even after donating $80 billion more to charities through his foundation. If Gates had held on to his shares in Microsoft as steadfastly as Zuckerberg has held on to his own shares in Meta, Gates would be worth nearly $700 billion, almost twice as much as Musk's. For someone who started their career in 1970, their financial investments would have rapidly compounded as long as they didn't sell during significant market downturns. Over that time, the market averaged an 11% return. However, most analysts agree that the last century was an exceptional period for the market, and future returns are likely to be lower. Vanguard, an investment manager, projects equity returns of 4.1 to 6.1% annually over the next decade, with a median volatility of 17%. Vanguard's bearish outlook is backed by rigorous analysis, as they have a financial interest in encouraging people to enter the market. If young individuals are not spending enough, it becomes their own fault for the potential difficulties in achieving financial success. For instance, if building a retirement fund of $500,000 over a 40-year career is considered a goal, investing just $60 per month with an 11% return would have reached that amount. However, if we consider even the most optimistic outlook of Vanguard's projected returns of 6.1%, achieving the same amount would require investing $250 per month over the same period. While some individuals may find it relatively easy to allocate $250 per month in their budget, those who could do so probably wouldn't be satisfied with just $500,000 in retirement. Financial planners often advise budgeting around 70% of one's income for retirement. Therefore, if someone earns $100,000 per year at the end of their career, they would budget to spend $70,000 per year in retirement. Lower returns means that larger investment is needed to generate that income, making it simultaneously harder to accumulate wealth. With an 11% return, an individual would need $650,000 to generate an annual retirement income of $70,000. Achieving this over a 40-year career would require a monthly investment of just $75. However, with a 6.1% return, one would need to invest $1.15 million to reach the same goal. These numbers highlight the impact of lower returns and the increased challenges in building a comfortable retirement fund. To achieve the same financial goal, you would need to invest $570 per month if you're earning $100,000 a year. That is a significant portion of your budget, assuming you maintain a six-figure income throughout your entire career and never miss a contribution. This realization can be quite sobering, which is why more young people are turning to alternative investments that promise higher returns, such as cryptocurrencies, NFTs, day trading, and meme stocks. Real estate prices cannot be overlooked any longer. 40% of homes in America are owned free and clear, with no mortgage. However, more Americans than ever believe that they'll never be able to afford a home. Rental prices have increased across the country and worldwide. Homeowners benefit from writing off the interest on their mortgage against their income, but renters do not have the same advantage with their rent payments. For renters, these factors significantly reduce their ability to save money, which is crucial for buying a home or making other financial progress. Accumulating a down payment takes more than a decade of dedicated savings in high cost of living cities. With real estate prices and interest rates, first time buyers are hit hard. Locking in a high interest rate for 30 years can be financially burdensome if rates decrease later as refinancing can be costly. Higher property taxes also lead to increased property taxes. Unfortunately, there isn't a single county in the country where someone earning minimum wage can afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment without facing financial difficulty. Purchasing an average home and making mortgage payments would consume more than 40% of the average salary, leaving little money for other savings or expenses. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content on personal finance and wealth building strategies. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below.